Welcome back to the Collective Clicks podcast. This is your host, Brandon Bateman, and today I'm going to be joined by Brad Chandler. Brad Chandler is an investor in the DMV area that has purchased over 4,000 homes in the past 20 years. Um, they purchased about 300 over the past year. Uh, and he has a wealth of, of knowledge from experiences, both in his personal life and his business life. Uh, we're going to talk in this episode about marketing directors and, and what it looks like to hire them. Um, we're going to talk about marketing and some of the key lessons he's learned there. We're going to talk about how he, he learned in his personal life, um, how to, to be happier and, and be more impact driven than, than money driven, um, and a ton of stuff more than that. So looking forward to, to the episode and I hope that it adds some good value for you. Thank you for joining us today, Brad. How you doing? I'm awesome. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. Uh, really happy to, to talk to you. You know, you're one of the very few people who wants to talk to me right now, right between Christmas and the new year. It's, uh, it seems like everybody's taking time off and, uh, and here we are. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Well, I, uh, I've, I've been looking forward to this conversation. You're, you're someone that I consider to, to have a, uh, a great depth of, of knowledge and experience more so than most real estate investors. I, uh, and, and personally, I've learned a lot from you and I think that, that our listeners certainly will as well. Um, before we get into it, just to kind of set the, the background so everybody's aware, could you just share like a little bit about yourself, um, what, what you're passionate about, um, your journey in real estate, and, uh, and like what you've, what you've accomplished there? Yeah, man. So uh, let's go back to ninth grade. I read a book on how to buy real estate with no money down, and at the time, I knew that's what, what I wanted to do. So I, went, I got my undergraduate degree. I got a graduate degree in real estate. I came out and was working for a developer in 2002, and an investor bought my neighbor's house in Vienna, Virginia. I went and talked to him. And he goes, I buy house at 30% below market, fix them up and resell them. I was like, geez, I didn't know you could do that. I thought you got rich by putting 20% down and, uh, you know, holding on to real estate. So that was in December, November, December of 2002. I'm like, this is what I'm going to do. I was working full time. My son was just born. So I'd come home at like six o'clock, uh, stay with him till eight, put him to bed at eight and then work from eight to 11 every day. And on weekends, pounding, we buy houses, signs, mailing out direct mail. Each month that went by and I didn't get a deal, but I was showing up to these RIA meetings uh, and these meetups, um, seeing people making all this money, and I'm like, if they can do it, I can do it. So I just became more and more persistent. In July of 2003, I bought my first house. In July and August of 2003, I bought six. In October, I came home and told my wife at the time, hey, I uh, just quit. I'm forming Express Home Buyers. And she's like, what? We have a newborn and I've got two kids to support and you just quit? I was like, it'll be fine. And here we are 19, 19 years later, 4,000 houses, and uh, it was fine. I, I, I was right. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, yeah, I, I think I think everybody's had a similar experience. I think when I when I started my company, uh, it took me, it took like years for my wife to even realize it was a company. You know, for a while, it just felt like that thing that you do to avoid working, where you just kind of like sit in that room on the computer and like, you know, quote unquote, <laughs> work, like whatever that is. <laughs> it's uh, I think it's how everybody starts, right? It takes a takes takes some time for for your family to believe. But that's that's way back in the day. I mean, so you were sending mail in like 2002. Yeah, man. And and I started SE I started a website in 2003 and I started SEO stuff in 2003. So, yeah. <laughs> nice. That's a uh, yeah, that's definitely gives you a jump on the market. It was a different uh different world back then. Um so so tell me about Express Home Buyers today. Um, like what, what kind of volume do you guys do? What kind of staff do you have? What's the focus? So we'll, uh, we'll do 300 deals or right around 300 deals this year, uh, primarily in DC, Baltimore and Los Angeles Metro. Uh, we just opened Los Angeles in the last six months cause we had an employee move out there, really talented guy. So we started spending some marketing dollars. So we're focusing on wholesaling. We're focusing on fix and flips. Obviously it's a really tough market right now. Um, prices are declining. So we gotta be really careful about the fix and flips we're doing. If we could do all wholesales, we would, but um, we, you know, sometimes you leave money on the table when you do wholesale. So really our focus is now just to weather this kind of storm that we're in now and it always goes away and it, and it will. Um, and then, you know, hopefully as prices continue to decline, we build up another portfolio because we, we did a pretty amazing job back in 20, like 10 ish to 12, we bought 80 rentals, wrote them up and sold them. And, um, frankly, maybe this time we can put another zero on those and, you know, buy 800 rentals. Yeah, understood. I'd also I'd love to dig a little bit more into your experience last time, just because, uh, I mean, you know as much as I do that the industry like talk to talk to the average wholesaler and ask them how long they've been in the business. Um, most of them have gotten into the business sometime between 2015 and now, right? Um, so so you're definitely like the the exception, not the rule. 
um, that you've been doing this for a little bit longer. Tell me about your business in like 2008, 2009, um, like that whole time period. It sounds like towards the, you know, towards the, the end of that recession, you're buying up a lot. And that's, that's, I imagine was a, a great wealth building experience for you. Um, but I just love to know a little bit more like holistically about that time period. Yeah. So before I jump into that, I mean, the, the new wholesalers, they're really struggling, right? Um, because I mean, everything's changing. The, the credit's getting tightened, the, the interest rates are going up, so the buy and holds don't make sense. So these guys who just started, uh, it's gonna be tough. I mean, it's gonna be tough for anybody, uh, anyone, but let alone the, the new guys. So I feel for them. Um, we have you know, we have cash, we've been around a long time, we have incredible contacts, we've, we've spent millions of dollars in marketing, so people still think of us even if you know, we're, not, we're not running ads, but we are. So anyway, um, back to your question about 2008, 2009, I mean, prices were coming down, right? So we would underwrite uh, 50 or a 5% decline. So if we thought the house would sell for, or comp showed 300,000, we'd underwrite it for 285. Um, one of the things that's really important in this market, Brandon, is these new wholesalers have never looked at actives because what, what's the point of looking at an active comp? You've got your sole comps. When the market's uh, plateaued or it's going up, you always want to look at sole comps to set your to set your basis. Well. If you continue looking at sold comps, you're going to be out of business really, really fast because you could have a comp that sold 60 days ago for $300,000. And so you base that purchase price on $300,000 and you didn't look at the actives and there's an active that's 275 that's been sitting there for 55 days. Guess what? Your place isn't worth 300. It's not even worth 275. Maybe it's worth 250. Maybe it's worth 240. We don't know. Um, but place a bigger emphasis on the active comps now in the declining market than the sold comps. So that's a big, that's a big uh, kind of gold nugget. Um, and then, you know, we, we made our houses look extra nice because we were renovating at the time. And, you know, like my partner said, we didn't need to sell a thousand houses. We needed to sell one house in one neighborhood, right, at a given time. So let's make our house the nicest one in the neighborhood. We've started staging again. We've started uh, doing landscape packages outside. Um, we used to go to brokerages firm, brokerage firms and offer, we take them to the Redskins games. We would, um, we would offer them incentives to sell our houses. We would give them an extra percent or an extra couple thousand dollars. So those are a lot of things that we did back then. Um, some of the stuff we're starting to introduce now. Yeah, understood. In other words, like you actually have to try to sell deals <laughs> these days. Yeah. It's not a, not like it was before, but I've actually heard similar things because so many people are trying to cut back on their rehabs. Uh, but I know quite a few companies that are kind of preaching, like now's the time, if any, to spend more money on your rehabs because you need a good product. You need the best looking house. You do. I mean, because cause, you know, the average person who could afford a four hundred thousand dollars house a couple of years ago or a year ago can afford like a two hundred and sixty thousand dollars house or something. It's crazy with with the interest rates. What what the interest rates have done in terms of volume and affordability. Yeah, yeah, understandable. Uh, so, so what about right now? Like, if we're if we're looking at like your your life right now and, and what you care about, what's uh, what's important to you? What are you passionate about? And and where are you trying to go? So uh, fortunately, I've got an amazing team. You'd ask about the team structure. I've got about 15 full-time employees in our Springfield office, and I've got about another 12 full-time virtual assistants in the Philippines. And we have the best team we've ever had in 19 years. So I am only working about three hours a week, if that, on Express Home Buyers. I I'm in a great position where it's, you know, it's running without me. Uh, two years ago, trying to get my son help for anxiety, I came across a lady, and I was on a Zoom call like this, and she said, um, you know, you have a tick. And I was like, what are you talking about? She says, you blink profusely when you talk about your childhood. You may have some unresolved childhood trauma. Do you want to come out and work with my, uh, bring your son out and we can work with my Navy SEAL husband at the time. Went out and in a weekend, Brandon, like my life was radically transformed. It was actually a three hour session that, that radically transformed my life. We went back and we looked at stresses and traumas from childhood. Um, what we all do is when we get in stresses or trauma, we form meanings or, or, or thoughts or untruths around those that that are good at the time in service to get through this stressful period. But when you're when you're six years old and something bad happens to you, you typically say it's happening to me because I'm bad. And that's how you get through it. At 47, when your subconscious mind is still telling you that you're bad and you're not, not worthy, it doesn't serve you. So it created, you know, two divorces, um, the use of alcohol and drugs in my life, um, five business mistakes that cost me nine million dollars. And the list goes on and on and on and on. So. I made this such a, and I don't drink anymore. I don't smoke weed anymore. I've been, two, it'll almost be, it'll be two years in a couple of weeks. It's been the best two years of my life. And my life has so radically changed and I found freedom and happiness on such a level that um, I know God put me here now to, to do this work and help other people. So I've started Brad Chandler Coaching and I'm helping other people, whether they're ang anxious or have depression or uh, weight issues or relationship issues, really anything around the mind. Um, 
it can be solved because it always comes back to the same thing. It always comes back to these unmet childhood needs. We didn't get our needs met as a child. We developed coping mechanisms, and then those coping mechanisms cause us illness, cause us mental distress, cause our shitty relationships, cause us to drink, on and on and on. So that's my focus. Um, I'm so passionate about it, if you can't tell. I've read probably 40 books. I've studied under some of the best people in the world in this space. I've gone to conferences. I mean, I just have immersed myself in... Um, I'm getting better and better every day, and I'm, I'm having some amazing results with my clients. Okay, that's awesome. So that's what you do with your other 37 hours to work each week. <laughs> yeah. Now that you're not, not working quite as much in Express Home Virus. And it sounds like that contributes to, to your happiness quite a bit, just that uh -oh. you, uh, you're really passionate about that. Yeah, let me tell you, man. It's, you know, I've made, I've, I've made $300,000 on, on, a, on a wholesale deal. Um, nothing compares to me getting a text and the phone calls that I get now saying you have radically changed my life and my family's life and I'll forever be indebted to you. It, it's, it is absolutely priceless. Understood. So, so what would your advice be for, like if you're looking at, uh, you mentioned multiple divorces, you mentioned uh, like $9 million worth of five mistakes. By the yeah. way, I want to know. I want to know more about those things. Like you mentioned, yeah. all these things that that kind of turned around for you. Um, so if if someone if someone's listening and and they might be in a similar situation to to where you were before, um, is there any piece of advice that you could give them that you think would would help like directionally get them onto the right path? I mean, totally. They're, they're, like I've I've developed a proven system, right? I, I took myself, or I was taken through a proven system, and then I I took his system and two other people, three other people that I've that are amazing, and just literally created the system to help anyone who's suffering. I mean, anything that you're suffering with, whether it's relationships or even business chaos, you're, you're in too many markets, you're trying to do too many things, your business has fallen apart, um, or you're like me, you start a business to try to make a lot of money. The companies that, that really blew up and were successful over time, they were always solving a problem. So now I'm, it's the first business that I've started where I'm not focusing on the money. It is a for-profit business and I certainly do charge, but I'm focused on how do I make the biggest impact. And I've done that in my business, and Express Home Buyers will, will likely have the best year they've had in business. When my shift went from focusing on money, 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 money to prove my worth to impact. How do, I, how do I make an impact on my employees and team members? How do I make an impact on the sellers? How do I make an impact on my investors? So I've started working with a lot of my employees who were, you know, what, the first person I worked with, she was sleeping two to three hours a night. She had migraine headaches. She had s extreme anxiety. She had bad relationships with her husband and her, and her, and her, um, her son. And in three one-hour sessions, she's a completely different human being. So I'm focusing on impact. But your question on what can someone do? To, to escape prison, Brandon, the first thing you need to know is that you're in prison. So if, you, if we had this talk two years ago and you said, Brad, do you love yourself? Do you care about what other people think? I'd be like, yeah, dude, I love myself. I'm really happy. Do I care about what other people think? No. Well, it was a lie because I wasn't aware enough to understand. But if I looked at my behavior and, and, and actually more my results, what are my results looking like? So if you're listening to this and you're like, well, I'm happy, I'm great. Well, okay, let me ask you a couple of questions. What does your relationship look like? Are you in a deeply connected, deeply committed and connected relationship? Or do you go from one bad relationship to the next? Do you find yourself doing self-destructive behaviors, drinking too much, eating too much, using drugs, gambling, sex, porn, whatever it is? Self-destructive behaviors, another sign of you know uh, lack of self-love. Do you find yourself judging other people, judging yourself, talking negatively about yourself? Are you constantly in a state of irritation? If any of those things answer is yes, there's a chance that you lack self-love, and if you do, and self-compassion, it's all from your childhood. It can be fixed very quickly in a matter of hours, not weeks, not months. And if any of those things you answered yes to, it's not going to only affect one area of your life. It's going to affect all areas of your life. So go find help, uh, whether you work with me or not. Uh, go find someone who is really good at, at going back to your childhood and not just focusing on the symptoms of today. That's what most therapists do. Through, through hypnosis, I'm able to access the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind is what really drives 80 or 90% of your behavior. And your subconscious mind knows exactly why you have the problems you have today. So we get in there, we figure it out, and we tell the brain a new story. And through neuroplasticity and recordings, we just retrain the brain the truth. Yeah, that uh, sounds like a completely different game than real estate. <laughs> not, used it, to, not used to speaking that language. That's, uh, it, that's so interesting. I, I wanted to I want to dig a little bit more into to one thing that you said this the shift towards being more impact driven and I understand like with the with the role that you have how that um, you know how that happens and how that could work with like what you're doing with your employees and, and things like that but what about for for someone that has been 
really money driven historically, and they're not going to necessarily be this like uh, you know this coach for their employees in that in that way. Um, what about the shift for for that person in, in terms of being more impact driven with their sellers and with their team? Uh, what are some simple things that they can do to have that kind of that kind of impact that you had with Express Home Buyers but by just changing the way that you looked at it? I mean, literally, the simple thing to do is you've got to start treating yourself as your best friend. Um, when, when you're upset, it's the six-year-old inside you that's upset. So imagine if a six-year-old girl or boy walked up to you and said, hey, I'm having a really bad day. I'm anxious. I don't feel worthy. What would you say? You'd likely put your arm around them and say it's going to be okay. But what do most of us do? We're like, suck it up, dude. Work harder. So you begin by loving yourself, and then that gives you the ability to love other people. But what, what, I mean, if you've got a team and you're not uh, in this to, to help your team members get the most out of life, then you're in the wrong business. Like, go, go work for someone or go, go work for yourself. You should be trying to figure out what are the personal goals and aspirations of your team members and how can you help them achieve them? Because if you can help them achieve their goals, guess what? They're going to help you achieve your goals. So build in a program where um, figure out what drives them. They want to buy their mom that new house in Florida. Okay, how much money do they have to make? And then what are the activities around what they can do to affect the change and the income that they're going to make? Help them get that. Help, And maybe it's not money. Maybe it's that they have the anxiety or depression. Well, go get them help. Reach out to me. I'll coach them. Like, go, go find someone who can give them what they want. All of us, what do we want? We want love. We want to be loved, and we want deeply connected relationships. And, and, and money makes things easier. It doesn't make you happy. But uh, you know, there's a study that over eighty thousand dollars. It doesn't matter if you make eighty thousand or eight hundred thousand or eight million. Uh, so money is important to get your baseline uh, needs met. Uh, but after that, it's 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 love and, and deep connection and, and community. So uh, anyone should be resourceful enough to find those things to help you achieve those. And if you're not, give me a call and I'll help you. Yeah, understood. Is there anything that you do, like from a cultural perspective, in your company to help create those things internally within the company? So yeah, I mean, it, like, so, so everything is. Sh- when I said everything in my life has shifted, the culture of my company has shifted because I used to go, I used to attract people, like similarly, like the relationships, both intimate and business. Like you attract different people when you're putting out different things and you feel different about yourself. So I've actually had employees come work for me after hearing my podcast. Like I want to work for this guy. So it's just how I live my life and how I show up every day, um, how I radiate, like care and love and not about like how are you doing rather than how much money are you making so so that's part of the culture another thing we do is we uh we do a weekly drawing at a company lunch every month um for someone who is who has embraced our core values and so we really promote the use of the core values and a lot of the core values are just super you know stuff that i believe in working hard working smart doing the right thing so just just an atmosphere of focusing on the right thing while taking care of your people and promoting the core values that we have yeah, absolutely understood. Um, that's that's awesome. I'd love to, to shift gears a little bit and talk about something you alluded to um, for for maybe some of these newer wholesalers that that haven't uh, haven't made the mistakes you have. I'm really curious to hear about these five mistakes that that add up to, to nine million dollars. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, you want me to talk about the nine mistakes or, or give some advice to the new wholesalers or both? <laughs> well, for for the basically, I, I'm really personally, I'm really curious about about the mistakes. I'm wondering if uh, if anybody listening to this might be able to to benefit from your previous mistakes to not make those same mistakes moving forward. Yeah, so in 2005, the first five months of 2005, I we my partner and I made a million and a half dollars net. At least on paper, it was a million and a half dollars net. So at the time, I'm thinking I'm the smartest guy in the world on a conscious level. Unconsciously, I'm still saying like, you're gonna F this up, something's wrong. But on a conscious level, I'm sitting there with my feet kicked back thinking, I'm smarter than all these other investors. They don't know what they're talking about. So we bought three development deals. One was a uh, townhouse, or excuse me, a condo conversion. One was a single family house. And another one was a freaking row house that smarty pants here thought he would just put a third level on, but didn't check with zoning. Didn't just just like we'll just we'll just increase the square footage. We can sell it for whatever it was, a thousand dollars a square foot. We'll just put another thousand square feet on, and there you go. Well, all three of those deals failed miserably. Those three deals cost us three million dollars. So th- those were the cause three of the nine million dollars. And one of those deals took us ten years to extricate ourselves from completely. The house in North Arlington that we were going to tear down and build two lots, we got kind of taken advantage of by the engineering company. But all they had to do was look at a title report and say, no, it's a corner lot. You can't subdivide this way. We lost $900,000 on that one deal. At our investors at the time, this is a great lesson, do the right thing. 
We didn't have personal guarantees. We could have walked away and saved ourselves $934,000. But what did we do? We did the right thing. We set up a payment plan. They reduced the interest rate a little bit, and we had two years to pay it off. We paid it off in 13 months. Those two brothers still lend to us today and have probably, we've probably borrowed and returned over $300 million to those guys. So don't think because you're good at one thing, you can be good at another. Development deals is so far different than fixing and flipping and wholesale, as you can now see. So stick to what you know and get really good at one thing. Um, the other mistakes, we tried to renovate too much. Renovating one house is hard enough. Trying to renovate 80 at any given time that has, has a four-hour four hour driving time between the two, really tough. We lost millions of dollars doing that. In 2008, I started Keller Williams team, thinking that I, this is my this is my subconscious mind. I wanted to be the first agent team to sell a billion dollars. Why? Well, if I could sell a billion dollars, I might be worthy to the world, right? So we lost a million dollars there. Um, I got involved in a trademark lawsuit. Most, most investors know I was the guy who got We Buy Houses trademark canceled. Well, should it have gone that far? That cost us almost $2 million. Um, no, it was my ego. It was like, I got to protect myself. It was silly. It was stupid. I mean, it cost us probably both $4 million between me and, and, and the We Buy Houses guy. So yeah, lots of mistakes. Um, and what I would tell you now in this market is you got to be really good. You shouldn't be looking at expanding markets unless every system is dialed in, unless you've got every person in the right seat, it, it, unless you've got your follow-up systems where a call comes in and you are all over that call immediately and you're setting appointments and you're following up with appointments. If you don't have everything dialed in, number one, you're probably gonna go out of business in this environment, but number two, you really shouldn't be thinking about anything else, expansion, self-storage, uh, multifamily, anything until you get your house right that's actually paying you know, your, your mortgage and feeding your family. Yeah, understood, focus first. And then, and then move on. Uh, yeah, make, makes sense. Yeah, that's a that it's heartbreaking to hear <laughs> about all those about all those mistakes. But uh, sounds like you've had some wins over the years too. That hopefully <laughs> add up, add up to yep. a little bit more. Yep, that's that's definitely the case. I, I've I've made millions and I've lost millions. And uh, look, it's uh, it, it's it's who I am, right? It, your your story of who you are is who you are, and you are right where you should be at any given point in the universe. Um, doesn't mean you have to stay there. Um, you can stay there if you want, but if you want to change your, your, your life and change your future, all you got to do is change your thinking about how you, how you perceive yourself in the world. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let, let's talk about marketing a little bit because that's, that's my focus. I'm really curious to hear some of your thoughts there. Um, what are some things that you've learned about marketing in, in this world of, of wholesaling and flipping real estate? I mean, what have I learned about marketing? Just forget real estate. What, what's important about marketing? Um, you know, Story Brand. It's it's a great organization, and it talks about everyone has an internal problem and an external problem. So you need your grass cut. Uh, that is the external problem. You never call because you need your grass cut. The internal problem is you've got house guests coming over, and you don't want to be embarrassed. Your HOA is going to find you. Your neighbors have been bugging you. So that's why you call someone. A lot of companies make the mistake of marketing to the external problem. So you've got to market to the internal problem, which what is their pain? Why are they calling you from a marketing standpoint? And then from a sales standpoint, it's the same thing. You got to focus on their pain. Don't focus on the offer number. Don't focus on how great you are as a company. Focus on how can you solve that problem? No one cares about who's listening to this podcast. No one cares about Brad Chandler or Justin, right? What they care about is Brandon. I, I, Brandon, I, I always I was want thinking, to call who's you. Justin? Sorry. Justin Bateman, I mean, come on, right? Uh, actor. Uh, Brandon, uh, so no one cares about us really. What they care about is what can we do to help them, help them change their lives, right? So, so that, that's, that's part of what I've learned. From, I mean, I've learned, we, we, we could have a two hour session on this, right? Um, but marketing is don't spend dollars unless you've got a really great follow-up system. Because for many years, we spent a million dollars a year on marketing and our follow-up system was terrible. Now our follow-up system is like amazing. So don't spend a dollar, a dime, whatever in, in marketing until you can really uh, make sure that you can, you, you can service those leads that are coming in. Yeah, th let's talk about what a great follow-up system is because I, uh, I have some suspicions. We have some, some clients that, uh, like my experience with, with follow-up systems and acquisitions and everything is that generally companies believe that they're in a really good spot there. And if everybody believes they're in a good spot, but some statistically are just performing significantly better than others, then it tells me that there's probably not everybody's doing everything exactly right, but it's hard to dig into to all the details. I imagine maybe you years ago, when, when you were spending this million dollars and a year in marketing, you, I don't know, did you feel like you had it figured out? 
We did, we did, and we were using Infusionsoft, which is really hard to figure out if you're doing something right. And when we switched systems, we went out on Salesforce, it was evident that we weren't that good at it. So, okay, so the CRM helped you. Yeah, so, so we have a 98, 99% contact rate, I think, of, peop- of leads that come in. So we're all over them. Um, those 13 VAs, the, when the phone call, when the lead comes in, if it's not picked up by a uh, acquisition specialist in our home office, it rolls over to the VAs and they're all over it. And if there's missed calls or after hours call, like they are just all over them all the time following up. What kind of metrics do you measure that help you know that your follow-up game is on track? So it's response to lead time, um, it's contact rate. Those are two huge ones. It's, you know, we look at appointments, we look at appointments closed. Um, you know, the one area of our business we probably could get better at, but I think we've made a lot of strides in the last six months is going on an appointment where we don't get the deal and we don't close it. Um, we could probably get a little better there. And I think that's where a, most of the leaky buckets around the country, at least with the big investors, are there. A lot of them are really good at getting an appointment. And then when they don't get the appointment, they're not great at the follow up. Understood. What about after that? So, what about long-term follow-up? What do you have in, in terms of that? So we do. I mean, we have a category just called just long-term follow-up, and we, you know, we hit people unless they're telling us not to. Like we're hitting people every single month. I mean, we we've closed leads um, from our old Infusionsoft system seven years prior. Uh, that they literally came in seven years, and we we so so we never stop contacting people again unless they ask us to. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, that's the tough thing about marketing return on investment. You have to, <laughs> you have to realize there's a, if you're if you're good at your follow up game. I've talked to a few people that are like, oh, I always I always close like seventy five percent of my deals. I close it, like on the spot, um, and like they view that as a positive thing, and I view that as you probably don't have enough follow up, because that would uh, that would skew your metrics quite a bit. I, I'm also curious to hear from you in terms of uh, in terms of like speaking of a, a well running machine from a marketing standpoint. How do you manage the marketing? Because I know you've gone through a, a few different uh, a few different phases and, and some better times and worse times in terms of like hiring marketing directors or managing it yourself, that kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, right now um, we 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 do not have a marketing director. Um, I I played that role for many years, and I, I love it. I love the whole marketing. I love the creative part of it. Uh, don't I'm not great at the data analytics point, but I, I like it. I like looking at reports and stuff and figure out what we do. So right now. Um, we're mani- we're, you know we're working with agencies like yourself we we have a couple of agencies and they they kind of handle everything and and they you know I mean you know this we we have a weekly or biweekly you know every two weeks call and we just walk through the metrics and we we work together as a team to try to you know improve things understood so basically outsource is your is your solution right now why have you yeah, chosen right. to go that way uh, I mean, overhead, like the, 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 our last marketing director was cost us a lot of money <laughs> <laughs> on, on several fronts. <laughs> yeah, fair uh, enough. And, and I, uh, th- that's, that's kind of one thing that I'm getting at here. Cause I, I had that experience of working, um, with, with your past marketing director. And I don't want to name any names or hope he never hears this or, or anything. Cause I, I'm trying to make this like a positive learning experience, sure. but I, but my, my honest belief, like most marketing directors that we have worked with as a company. I really don't think they're adding that much value to the company that they're working with. That's that's been my experience. Like when when your previous marketing director left, you probably remember that your your return on investment on your marketing with us literally quadrupled the the moment that they left because they put so many constraints on us and what we could do, what we couldn't do, what we could say, what we couldn't say, where the landing pages were, all these things and and they basically like didn't allow us or potentially even some of your other vendors to really like make the impact that they that they need to make. Sure. I um, heard that. Yeah, I heard that from from other vendors as well. Yeah, so it's a uh, yeah that's that's a case where maybe a marketing director adds negative value, <laughs> but but there's other cases where it's it's a tough game though because uh, you want someone like it's it's like being a marketing director is like being a steward of of money, right? Uh, you're you're investing in that person and it's uh, like I think I think many are are well intentioned, but it's just it's a hard role and it's hard to treat that money as if it was your own, right? A business owner just Absolutely. does it on a different level. But on the flip side of that, Brandon, it's hard to find good agencies. Like you, you're the mm-hmm. exception out there, right? So while I'd say, yeah, maybe go the agency route. I mean, you can get snowed by agencies because you, they'll tell you what they want you to hear and not, you know, what what really should be happening because their incentive is just make more money, make more money, make more money. And you don't operate like that, and so yeah, just just be really careful of the agency that you select. Yeah, fair enough. What's uh? Do you have any guidance on that? What what makes you choose one agency over another? 
I mean, look, I, I, so this is, you know, it's kind of like the whole IT thing. Um, we don't, when you don't know something, it's really hard. Um, I, I would have to just say, you know, do exhaustive research on them, have several conversations with them, and then look for referrals. Like, uh, you know, this is a pretty connected community. Um, and so if I'm saying, hey, just, uh, just Brandon's organization is amazing to work with, um, you know, I've got a pretty good name. So ask people who've worked with, that's what I, I would do that, first of all. I would ask people who've worked with them, and not just over two months, three months, but who are the clients that have been with someone for a year or two, and see if, they, see if you can talk with them. Yeah, understood, uh, which, yeah, probably, honestly, is the best, <laughs> the best way to get an idea of it. I agree, it's, it's a tough game to, to, uh, to make a decision on something that you don't fully understand the, the details of it. Um, so so in, in closing this up, is, is there any other ad- advice that, that you would share or anything you want, to, uh, you want our listeners to know? Yeah, I mean, this is going to go back to the personal side because you guys can make, you know, 10 million bucks and, and not be fulfilled. Uh, you, you can pick up, you know, look at the newspaper, look at all the people who have died, you know, the princes of the world, the Michael Jacksons, the on and on and on and on and on. Um, so if you're suffering, I just want you to know that you don't have to suffer a day longer. Uh, there is a proven method to, to stop your suffering. And once you do the work and figure out, you know, the truths and live under the truths, like everything in your life will change, including the business, the way you run your business, just just like it's done with me. Like I have literally transformed the way that I run my business, the way that I track people, the way that I look at growth now. I don't need to go make $10 million. Would I like to make $10 million to change the world? Yes. But I'm not, I'm not looking from the standpoint that I'm, I have to make this. I have to make this. So... Now I don't come up with all these crazy ideas and market expansion and let's do this business and and let's do that business. So I would just take a good hard look at where you are in your life. When you look in the mirror, um, do you say, hey, this is exactly where I want to be? And or do you do you look in the mirror and say, gosh, I wish things were different. I thought things would be different by now. And if the if the if it's the latter answer, you thought things would be different now. You got to take action, right? You you keep doing what you're going to do. You're always going to get what you get. So if you're in a shitty marriage or your business is going downhill or you're out of shape or whatever it is, <clears throat> you got to take some change. And there is a little bit of pain. Like to to, to look at the truth, you got to go through the the pain of the truth to get to the freedom. But I am a testament to tell you that going through that pain and getting to the freedom is something I never. Um, I never even dreamed about. I did not know life could be this good. And, and there's no reason that that can't happen for you too. Yeah, understood. Um, for, for anybody that wants to contact you specifically uh, to talk about that or, or anything else, how do they get a hold of you? Yeah, so go to bradchandler.com forward slash contact, and I've got everything in there. My little four-minute story of my life and my transformation. Um, I'll do, I'll have a free 30-minute phone call with you, whether you work with me or not. I want to help you. I want to help you find the freedom I have. And then every single day of the year, I put out a, a video on freedom and happiness and relationships and all this great stuff. So every social media link is on that page, bradchandler.com forward slash contact. Okay, awesome. Well, well, good for you. Thank you for taking the time to, to join me today. And for, for everybody else listening, I'll see you next time.